Maybe in our hearts, we all felt it, right? That this time Isro was going to do the job. And as expected, Isro did not disappoint. India's Chandrayaan-3 has successfully landed on the moon. Yes, they are saying that India has achieved what nobody else could. Yes, India's Chandrayaan-3 has made history by becoming the first spacecraft to successfully land on the moon's South Pole. But before I talk about how the world is reacting to ISRO's achievement and how this achievement is going to benefit India, let's just relive the moment again. It's happening. It's happening. Yeah. 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 It's done. People are applauding. Let us all wait to hear from the Secretary Department of Space and Chairman ISRO, Sri S. Somna. So yes, as expected, congratulatory messages from other space agencies were received. The European Space Agency, ESA, congratulated India. ESA's Director General, Joseph Ashbacher, tweeted, Incredible! Congratulations to ISRO, Chandrayaan-3 and to all the people of India. He added, what a way to demonstrate new technologies and achieve India's first soft landing on another celestial body. Well done. I am thoroughly impressed. Also, the UK Space Agency congratulated ISRO, tweeting, history made. And as expected, Bill Nelson, 14th NASA administrator, congratulated India for becoming the fourth country to successfully soft land a spacecraft on the moon. And it seems that the New York Times, known for its disrespectful cartoon that mocked Isro several years ago, is now too afraid to look down upon Isro. This time around, it even had dedicated live coverage of the mission, and there it was mentioned that the two robots from a mission named Chandrayaan-3 make India the first country to ever reach this part of the lunar surface in one piece, and only the fourth country ever to land on the moon. As far as the importance of this mission is concerned, it has been observed that there is some sort of uncertainty over the ownership of the extracted lunar resources. Not only that, as described here, the US and Luxembourg took advantage of the uncertainty over the resources and enacted domestic laws granting ownership of the extracted celestial resources to the prospective space mining companies operating from their jurisdiction. This is why India's presence on the moon is important. They say that unlike other nations, India doesn't intend to colonize the moon. India has dedicated this mission to humanity. I mean, listen to their Prime Minister here. Our approach of one earth, one family, one future is resonating across the globe. This human-centric approach that we present and that we represent, our moon mission, it also based on the same human-centric approach. Therefore, this success belongs to all our humanity. I am confident that all countries in the world, including those from the global south, are capable of achieving such feats. Yes, it is absolutely important to remember that India, who has emerged as the voice of the oppressed, the colonized and the global south, is now present on the moon. And yes, it is also important to remember how many doubted ISRO, mocked ISRO and even mocked ISRO scientists for being Hindus or for praying in temples. And here I highly recommend that you watch my response to those who mocked these scientists. Anyway, in the end, it is all about hard work and good intentions. India has done what no other country could do, but for ISRO, this is just a new beginning. As mentioned in the article in The Guardian, for India, the successful landing marks its emergence as a space power. See you again.